Hi, my name is Stephen Fishwick and I'm excited to share this process with you today. What I'm going to do is try to take you through an entire painting from concept and, and initial idea all the way through to the end. Uh, one of my favorite movies that Disney has done is The Sleeping Beauty. And Maleficent is by far one of my favorite villainesses out there. The scene of which I, I have in my mind that I want to paint is the scene at the end when she realizes that Prince Charming is not going to give up. He's relentless. He's broken through his chains. He's now on his way to the castle. And she sends all those thorns around the castle. He hacks through them. And that's when she bursts into morphing into that dragon. And so what I want to do is do a painting that will engulf that entire scene for me when I saw it at first as a kid and even since I've seen it with my children, is do a painting that will represent that entire scene. And so I'm going to walk you through that whole process. You're going to get to see my rough sketches. You're going to get to see the entire process beginning to end. And so let's get started. I hope you enjoy it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tone a canvas. I have an idea in my mind of the energy that I want to use and that's why I I play music while I'm toning the canvas. Put as much energy into the texturing of the canvas. Up close you can see the details of the thick gesso that I use to texture the canvas. Now I'm going to start sketching out my idea. In my mind I have a really rough idea of what I'd like this to look like. I have the, the energy idea and the flow of the direction I want this. I want Maleficent to literally be shown bursting into this dragon. But I also want to include Prince Charming in there and, and a, a slight scene of where he is going to be basically defending himself and, and fighting for his beauty. So I'm going to have all the energy coming toward Prince Valiant and that's where I'm going to want your eye to be seeing but I certainly don't want that to be the first place you look. I want to lead you around the canvas. So now I'm going to stain my canvas. The gesso is dry and I'm going to start going in and with the same energy that I put down the texture of the canvas, I'm going to put down the first tones of the canvas. And I'm really just rubbing wet paint on a wet rag around the canvas and seeing what's going to develop. I really don't know what's going to develop. Uh, that's why art is such a fun journey. I know that I'm going to have Maleficent down in this corner and I know I want some red around her area. I'm just playing, moving around, taking a look at it. I think I'm ready to start sketching. So I take my rough that I've sketched out and I start applying that to the canvas. And as the painting develops, it's going gonna, it's gonna to morph itself into uh, different directions. I may move things and shift things. There's nothing that's ever set in stone for me. If I don't like an area, I'm going to paint over it. I'm going to lay in my dark areas first throughout the whole canvas. And I'm going to rub out those dark areas so that I kind of have a slow buildup of color. I do love to have the underpainting textures and energy coming through into the top layers of the painting. and I'm remembering what direction I want your eye to be moving. I want Maleficent's eyes looking at Prince Charming. I want the dragon's eyes looking at Prince Charming. So I'm trying to get this almost a, a backwards arabesque flow all heading toward Prince Charming. And he's going to be put in very subtly. I work with acrylic paints. Uh, it allows me to do a lot of layering. It allows me, I handle acrylics just like I've been trained traditionally with oils. 
I do a lot of rubbing out, bringing it back down to the canvas. What people don't know, if you use a wash on acrylic paint, it's still very moldable. You, you can rub right back down to the white of the gesso. You can build it right up on top of it. The thing I do like about it is I paint with my fingers a lot and have less chance of getting cancer in a few years by using acrylic versus oil. So I'm still laying in, in my tones. I'm laying in my darks, I'm laying in my lights. Uh, quite often I'll scrub out my lights so where you see his, the dragon's eyes and his mouth open, I've actually rubbed with a wet rag back down to the white gesso of the canvas. So it's kind of a dance back and forth between lights and darks, all knowing that I'm going to be building up to this, this scene. I'll start playing with the detail coming in. Even at this point, I'm not afraid to rub out with a wet rag and, and soften edges so I know I can build them up later on. I love painting the detail of a painting, but it's usually the last 20 minutes of the process for me. Uh, so many of the hours are spent just building up a foundation of the painting before I can get in there and hit the nice little highlights and finessing the little areas that will help the painting pop. It takes hours and hours and then can be finished up in 20 minutes with the detail at the end. You can see the energy coming so that all of the eyes are focused on prints. Even the curves of her cape, I want them swirling back into where Prince Charming is at. I spend a lot of my time looking at other people's artwork and some of the artwork I'm drawn most to are some of the old illustrators, uh, Howard Pyle and Dean Cornwell, N.C. Wyatt, and they were able to lead your eye around their painting. Obviously they were illustrators trying to usually illustrate a story or a page of a story. and so. Quite often their paintings do the exact same thing the, the author of the book is doing. He's leading you through the, through the image, through the scenery that they're laying out. And so that's what I'm trying to do with this painting as well. I'm trying to lead you around. I want you to first see Maleficent as she's building up her anger and then as she culminates into this giant dragon and ultimately landing your focus on Prince Charming and the battle that's about to ensue. Now Maleficent's face is going to go through quite a few changes from, from initial paint being applied to a, a final face. And that's because I, I go through a process of things I like and things I don't, stepping back and taking a look and seeing if the mood that I'm creating on her is what I'm really looking for. Uh, you can see she's smiling right now, but in the final piece she won't have, some, she'll have more of an anger to her. I like the energy of the smile, but what I'm trying to con convey in this painting is her anger. And so you're going to see that face more over time.
And at this stage of the painting, I'm really trying to have every brush stroke mean something and, and move in a certain direction. Those brush strokes are what is going to lead your eye throughout this painting. Some of the tiling that I'm doing is really just to create movement and energy around the piece. I try to use that tiling to break up some of the, the directional flow that's going on. I don't want you to get a headache when you look at the piece. I want you to be able to actually embrace it and be led around it. I'm using these little tiles as scales that are almost bursting off of the, the canvas and the piece so that you're, you can't really focus on all of the details that are happening at one time, but you get the gist of what's happening and what's, what's going on around it. As I start throwing the paint, it's the same process. I'm trying to throw in the movement and the motion that the strokes on the canvas are leading you. So you'll see me turn the canvas and pivot it just to get directional lines and directional flow. of Almost every canvas I paint on has some paint thrown at some point. I love touching the paint. It's just, it draws me that much closer to the whole experience. The frame to this piece is going to be just as important as the piece itself, and you're going to get to see that whole process as well. Painting is done now, and I have this vision of that scene that I talked about at the beginning of this video, where Maleficent sends the pile of thorns around the castle, and Prince Charming has to whack his way through, and so I really have this idea to have the frame really represent those those thorns and that craziness of, the, of that scene. So I have my buddy here, Mike Bradbury, who is an artist that works in wood and metals. And Mike, if you guys have ever seen the uh, Monsters, Inc. piece, Mike's the one who built the door frame for that Monsters, Inc. original piece. So Mike, I've kind of sketched out what I'm thinking. It's And I don't really know where I'm going with it, but what I'd like to do is see a lot of steel, you know, dark iron steel wrapped around this, and I was thinking some piping, you know, that may go across this that I've done in a sketch here. I don't know what materials you have. I, I was thinking barbed wire, or I was thinking, you know, yeah. kind of that energy from that scene. Let me move this out of the way. But it sounds like what you were talking about was something that was a little bit more organic, something that was a little bit more, you know, you wanted brambles, you wanted Definitely. and thorns. Rod iron, uh, it, it's actually called uh, hammered rod is what it is. Oh, this and looks what good. What they do is they, they take just a piece of steel and they just beat the heck out of it and uh, make it look like you know a piece of vine or a piece of, you know, just branch. Can you get these uh, in di different thicknesses? Yeah, in all different thicknesses. Uh, and we can, you know, we can twist them and we can turn them and we can oh, know, okay. make different stuff. Uh, all right. Well, why don't I let you do your thing? Okay. You know, you, I love that that you take whatever I say out loud and you just turn it into something of your own. So, all right, why don't we let you get to work Great. and see what you come up with and we'll start, for, start from there. So, I'm excited.
All right, so Mike's called me. He says he's all done with the frame. I'm about to see it for the first time. I'm really excited. Come along. How you doing, Mike? Great. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, got it done. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it really came out fantastic. I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to match the piece well. It matches the, uh, the attitude of the piece. It's uh, way uh, more organic, which is, yeah. after you said that word, I started thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, I really do want it to look like just real thorns. And boy, so tell us what you did here. Okay, well, uh, we, I took that, uh, that hammered rod that I showed you, and I basically got the torch to it, heated it up red hot, and bent it you know, in all different kinds of directions. I was just kind of going with the flow. There was no really pattern. It was just, you know, let's twist it here, let's twist it there. It looks like real vines. Yeah, and, and then I, I got uh, a piece of old cable, and uh, there's a, an old product called Square Nails. They used to use them back in the colonial days. Like those old carpenter nails? Yep, yep exactly. It. And, you know, it, it looks more like thorns. It's not like barbed wire. It's going to be sharp. Uh, you know, they're pointy, yeah. but they're not really dangerous. These look great. Like more than I thought. Yeah, that, that's actually the ends of the cables. Uh, and I figured, hey, you know, vines have uh, these little, little feeler things. Yeah. So just twist them around like a screwdriver, and, uh, and that was it. It looks fantastic. Great. Well, let's, uh, let's get the painting in here. All right. Well, Steve, there it is. All mounted, ready to go. It's awesome. I love it. It's exactly what I was hoping it would be. It's, it's definitely got the feel of that scene where Maleficent sends all the thorns around the castle. He hacks through them, trying to save his princess. It's perfect. I love it. I Great. love it. Thanks, Glad Mike. To be a part of it. So look for more videos in the future of the process from start to finish. Guys, thanks so much.